the very ending, Trinity's handiwork with Dexter's wife, my first response was, oh my God, what an ending. My first thought about the ending was about Julie and uh, just wrapping my head around the idea of Dexter without her. Um, just for me as an actor and also for Dexter as a character. I did think it was uh, a really bold stroke in terms of resetting the stage for what's to come, whatever that may be. Um, so from a storytelling standpoint, as far as the future goes, it's an exciting proposition. But uh, I think more than anything, I was just, I was horrified. And I felt for the audience. I mean, I think that this is the kind of thing that's really going to tie people in knots. And uh, this is the final episode, so people are going to, along with us, are going to have to wait to find out what's in store. Well, the, the interesting thing about this whole process, and it's like nothing I've ever been involved in, is the sort of uh, culture of secrecy surrounding absolutely everything. Thank goodness Showtime and the producers and the writers, they wanted to withhold absolutely everything from everybody who might conceivably be watching Dexter. Mm -hmm. So they really loved the idea of surprising people. So we did find out... I think two or three weeks prior to the ending of the show that that Rita's character would die at the end. But we didn't find out how. There were no specific pages until maybe a couple of days before we shot, and yeah. those pages were made available just for, I think, the actors in the scene yeah. and maybe people who were shooting it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was very, very hush-hush. There was a false ending written mm -hmm. in the final episode. Um, yeah, I remember being at the table reading and getting to the end and thinking, well, <laughs> that's all they're going to do? Yeah. Rita's just going to go away to Orlando? And then you're the one who told me, you know that's a false ending, don't you? And I thought, oh, of course, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to lose a major character and a major actress from a series, don't let a crisis go to waste. Right. You know, give her a fantastic exit and make a huge impact. It is a fantastic choice they made. For one thing, the ending of the story between Dexter and Trinity, the killing scene, it almost ends on a sympathetic note. You can't control the demon inside of you any more than I could control mine. What appears to be a kindness on mm -hmm. Trinity's mm -hmm. part. So what's the alternative, Arthur? Fake my own death and start over again. You'll still be you. All this sage advice to almost a child mm -hmm. that's such a misleading <laughs> moment i have a family too arthur because a minute and a half later you see what trinity has done i imagine people immediately cranking back and watching that scene again because right. it's now fueled by so much other dark stuff yeah i mean i think it's a it's a question that dexter will take to his own grave um, what happened in that room, mm -hmm. what was being communicated when I thought something else was being communicated. You know, I don't know what kind of doors this is going to open or shut for Dexter, but this will result in some sort of, I think, fundamental change. Yeah. I think it's been one of the great things about the whole season that you've seen Dexter more emotionally expressive than he's ever been. Mm -hmm. And that's all a result of the enormity of... Trinity's evil. He's so yeah. much worse than Dexter. Mm -hmm. He even appalls another serial killer. My most appalling scene is the very first. <laughs> it's already over. Shortly thereafter, you see me walking a dog on the sidewalk at night. Yeah. And it's like, it's no! Like, oh, it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Arthur, you and your family have been doing this a long time? Right, for years. I took Sally on a build for our very first date. <laughs> Trinity is a completely two-faced man. He appears to be so good and so nice and so kind. And yet, 
by the same extreme, he's completely despicable. I think that tension is what's so scary about him. And they found an actor who's known to be a kind of silly, nice guy. My most recent reputation has been completely dominated by Third Rock from the Sun, uh, a goofball, you know, and a comic. To take an actor like that and just uh, just have his face fall, you know, and become evil. I mean, that, it, it just throw, knocks all your pins out. Don't touch my sister. I watched the show with, <clears throat> with my wife and my kids. And when every episode is over, my wife look, turns from the screen and looks at me like, <laughs> like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> what have I done? <laughs> but of course, that's exactly what Trinity's all about. Yeah. I think Dexter is simultaneously appalled by and fascinated by Trinity. Like so many things on the show, I experienced in, in playing the scenes with you a simultaneous reverence and disgust. Or, mm -hmm. and, um, Pretty much did describes our, our relationship. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a stretch. <laughs> John Lithgow. <you> know. <laughs> Reverence and disgust. I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> Hello, Dexter Morgan. One of the great things about the whole season that you've seen the story of these two serial killers colliding and throwing each other wildly off their game. Trinity's pattern is so rigid and performed almost to perfection. And suddenly he's killing this guy named Kyle Butler just because he showed up. He's killing Rita out of pure vengeance. Dexter has thrown him way off his game. And I think the same thing has happened to Dexter. He killed an innocent man. There's not a great deal of decisiveness for the first time. Um, you know, Dexter gives himself excuses about why he lets Trinity survive, but I think ultimately he really craves, covert though it may be, the sense of connection he has with this man. Well, you're really seeking something from your victim as you never have before. Right. In a way that I think in spite of himself um, yeah. does need some sort of confirmation. Yeah some sort of confirmation that he's different from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or that, that there's a possibility to take another step in terms yeah. of the way he can live his life, but he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's in way over his head. I should killed you when I had the chance. One of the great moments of these 12 episodes and one of the real turning points was when Dexter flings Trinity down on the floor of the kitchen and says, I should have killed you when I had the chance. I always saw that as the scales falling from Trinity's eyes. He just looks into Dexter's eyes and he knows everything about him. Mm -hmm. And suddenly Trinity is terrified of Dexter. It's an extremely complex moment. And it was really frightening to play it because there was a Michael Hall that I had not seen before too. <laughs> yeah. Just sort of roaring Worst out of the box. Worst Thanksgiving ever. Yeah. Boy, was that fun. Wasn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of this. Yeah, we were laughing all day long. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's my turn now to embrace my family. On the surface of it, before that final scene, Dexter learns from Trinity that he has an aspiration to be better than the cover, that he can actually live in accordance to what he experiences to be a connection to people who care about him and need him. What he ultimately learns from Trinity, not this is God's work, but it's his fate. And maybe he's prepared to, in some way, roll with that or embrace it or surrender to it. You never see Trinity learn everything about Dexter. Right. The way Dexter learns everything about Trinity. He never learns about Harry's code. But I do think he is weirdly intuitive. What he's done is he's left Dexter with exactly the scenario that began Dexter's life. 
Undoubtedly, Dexter is permanently changed going forward because of what Trinity has done, because of Rita's murder. And I think for the first time, Dexter will be saddled with this appetite for vengeance that can't be mm -hmm. uh, sated. Perhaps he'll slam shut every door he's opened in terms of his vulnerable, emotional human self. Uh, maybe not. I, 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 it's hard to say definitively exactly what will change and how it will change, but to step into something where so much change is afoot when you've been doing it for four seasons is a real gift. What do we do next, Michael? <laughs> I don't know. I wish I knew the answer It's that. been fabulous, fabulous working with you. Likewise. I'm certainly glad I'm not <laughs> writing next season because it's an enormous challenge. All I know for sure is that I'll be watching.